Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm today here speaking to you about our efforts to essentially uh, give JAX a further backend, if, sort of like a TLDR with OpenMP to essentially run inference much more efficiently. And the whole thing is sort of happening in collaboration with a few people. So, for example, Billy and Alex are sitting over there. Uh, Martin and Jose sadly couldn't make it, but they're here in, in spirit, I would say. So what's the motivation here? So, I mean, we all like the abstraction law of JAX when we write our machine learning code. We have very good APIs, we have the NumPy API, we have very good abstractions around VMAP and PMAP. We have nice suit engines, we, can have, we have this through the arrays. And that's why a lot of these modern training frameworks that we have these days and actually use in, like, actually use sort of in production are based on JAX. But on the JAX side, um, all these libraries um, essentially live on their own, but on the inference side, PyTorch sort of reigns supreme. Like the PyTorch has very good inference libraries, and most people use that or even more specialized inference engines. So why do we care that much about JAX in this instance? Like for us, JAX is very nice because JAX at a very high level to us is just a very thin front end of a very strong MLR compiler stack that we can actually then manipulate and do our own stuff with. So we can essentially, one could hack on the JAX per, which, which we're not actually doing here, but like we have stable H low and then we can do all kinds of crazy stuff inside of the MLR backend. And so, so what we sort of get out of this is that we can essentially uh, run our own JIT and just go straight to an executable without actually having to do this uh, rewrite step where, for example, what which on community hardware these days is a very common thing that you rewrite and say a C library, like out of Llama CPP, for example, ggml.di developed. And so where we sort of come at this from a motivational level is that we have, uh, which you can also see at posters uh, tomorrow, uh, we've recently introduced this large data set of LVMIR, but we're now training a bunch of transformers, which actually also want to use at some point, hopefully, for some task inside of a compiler to try out machine learning compiler optimizations. But for that, we want to be fast and we want to be able to experiment fast. So that's why we want to run this kind of stuff. So let me just show you what sort of uh, the compilation step of this looks like. So let's say we just start on the JAX level, just some very simple code here. It's not a large language model. We essentially get our stable HO dialect. Uh, and then we essentially run Erie to convert from stable HO down to MLIR, what is called uh, stable HO to MLIR as the pass. And then we have Linalge, and we essentially control the entire MLIR lowering steps here. So essentially, at the end, end up at LVMIR. Sorry, jump too fast. Uh, obviously, it gets, we essentially have to go to LVM dialect, MLIR translate, and then we have LVMIR and we can do all our executable stuff there. Our IR gets bigger, so, but that's okay with us. So why do we really want OpenMP in this context? So just as a quick refresher, usually OpenMP, you have the pragmas, and then you have the front end, middle end, and then compile it. But what we really want sort of mid to long term here is that we can essentially also do device offloading where we can utilize a lot of the work that's been happening on the OpenMP side and have these parallelism and workshop generating directives, link them up, and essentially just generate OpenMP code there. And this is sort of broadly in the spirit of uh, where you essentially the work's called breaking the vendor lock. Um, where essentially the front end here generates a code, runtime creates and controls the parallelism and device offloading, and then the compiling is everything together, and we can run even more specific optimizations that we are used to, where, for example, Jose is very involved on the OpenMP side, and so that's a lot of the stuff we can benefit from. <laughs> so uh, what's, to summarize what is working, like mostly right now we're running on CPU, and the entire device offloading stuff is heavily work in progress and some stuff has not even started yet. And so to summarize and sort of begin wrapping this up, so what do we have? If we have 
We have an OpenMP CPU backend. Uh, OpenMP GPU is still work in progress slash future work. And then we'll also be able to directly emit C code um, to essentially sort of match what people like GML.ai have to hand write, rewrite themselves. So to conclude it up and wrap this all up, um, we have very working pipeline from stable HTML to LVMIR, and which can be controlled at any point and we run well. We are working up to basically have this full OpenMP device flowing backend also for inference. And this is heavily targeted towards large language inference um, as that's what we are essentially running on the LVM for machine learning side right now. And we really want to bring up OpenMP on GPU and the direct emission of, of, of C is still sort of hung up because there's one uh, PR which is not merged yet, but that will hopefully be merged soon. And yeah, if you have any requests, ideas around the interfaces, happy to talk and thank you for your attention.